Good evening, folks. Welcome to this special conversation. My guest today in this special dialogue series, which has been created in collaboration with India's finest communication network, which is now spreading its tentacles across the world, speak in, in partnership with me, yours truly, Bhupen the Chaube, who's created his own platform, Dr. Bhupen. We're trying in these completely unprecedented times of corona pandemic, we're trying to give you an experience of what your life is really going to be like. Once, hopefully, the word normal, the way we used to look at it, once that word normal once again ends up becoming a part of our lives. My guest today is someone who needs absolutely no introduction. It's a great pleasure to be joined by Dr. Surinam Swami, uh, one of the foremost politicians of our times. I describe him as a politician who would have chronicled an entire life story of India as a nation. So good evening and welcome Dr. Swami. Hope you're safe and sound Percy, sir. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, look thank forward you. to this program. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Let me just, uh, you know, let me just update you and let me brief you on who are the audiences today uh, yeah. who, who are watching this uh, this webinar. These are some of the topmost uh, industrialists and topmost uh, business houses from oh. across the state of uh, West Bengal and uh, and other northeastern states. Uh, this program, of course, will also then be shown to a much wider audience uh, when we put it out on our respective platform. So pretty much you have a global audience today in front of you, which is being led by this, uh, by this chamber, by the Alpha Club, which is, uh, which is based out of Kolkata. A lot of our, our friends who are watching this broadcast and listening to each and every word uh, that you're saying today. As I pointed out that, uh, you know, this is the Alpha Network and, and they all have uh, well, questions related to economy. But there are a lot of personal questions also, because Dr. Yeah. Swami, the, the word is, they, they, they want to understand the working of this government. Yes. So let me give, you, give it a straight up. Does anyone know how this government works, Dr. Swami? I know how it works. There's only one minister how? in that government, and that is called Manmo uh, Narendra Modi. Well, everyone how can you, how else, can the government work everyone like else uh, doesn't have the, the freedom I enjoyed as a minister is I decide hmm. something, sign the file. If it was a matter of uh, national security, you'd go to the PM. Otherwise, I get hmm. it implemented. Today, the hmm. system is that everything a minister signs goes to the PMO. And in PMO, hmm. you, got the, you haven't got the best brains in the world, of the country there. Uh, some hmm. of them are, in fact, I don't even know whether they are loyal to us. Uh, that is our hmm. party. And uh, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, well, where is the, look at, just take an example. In March middle, uh, Nitin Gadkari announced that he had uh, had a conference and decided on a a pro, uh, you know, a, uh, a stimulus program for MSME and the amount of money necessary. It went to the finance hmm. ministry, it's still lying there. And poor hmm. Gadkari is cornered everywhere by the press. What happened to this? It's coming, it's coming. I just had a talk with the prime minister. Now, that's hmm. not the way there must, this government has, uh, had a, you know, we are very happy with uh, Narendra Modi as a prime minister. Uh, we were sure that he was, he'll be a tough guy and all that, uh, not uh, this uh, adjusting type that uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee was. And we were quite uh, all unanimous in wanting him as prime minister. But the hmm. question is, there has to be decentralization of decision making, and that's not taking place. Hmm. If, if that is not taking place, is that the reason why? You know, is that the reason why, Dr. Swami, there is a feeling that somewhere this is a government which is which is only forever doing fire fighting. You know, it's doing image management. Far too much time is spent on image management rather than actually thinking of what policy making should be. Is it because this is a one minister government as you're pointing out? No, the image uh, uh, making problem is you guys. Yeah, you have all surrendered, you're all cracked up. Uh, and I know that it's very difficult uh, not to crack up because of the fact that, uh, you know, yes, your uh, industry is such that you you can't displease the government. The government cuts uh, the uh, government advertisement. You're in big trouble. Uh, so, hmm. but therefore, uh, it's uh, you know uh, it's easy to uh, do spin in uh, in the Indian situation. Uh, the extreme case was the emergency, but uh, today hmm. also there's a lot of spin, and uh, you know in the economy you see every time there is a Projection that the growth rate will be seven percent, and you end up with five. 
and there is no accountability. Mm. The problem is there's mm. no question. You said this on this mm. and this date, then didn't happen. Why? Please explain. Nobody puts the minister to such kind of scrutiny. But then look at look at, look at what one of our viewers is talking about. the government. Yes, but Dr. Swami, look at you know to your to your precise point that this is a one minister government. Ishan, who's watching this broadcast, Ishan wants to know that if I have to go by what Dr. Swami is saying that this is a one minister government, is it not good? Because the UPA government was a multifaceted government, was a multi phase government <laughs> when he thought, right? And what no, happened no, to the a, corruption cases? No, no, there's a Will difference. Will decentralization lead to corruption? It was highly corrupt, the UPA government. You can't, I mean, I have just touched the tip of the iceberg. And uh, even that, even you see, that was difficult because the UPA by then had got its tentacles into every party. And even mm -hmm. in our own party, there were people who were saying that I was unnecessarily putting every the party into confrontation. Parliament will not work. We need cooperation. Mm -hmm. We don't have majority in Rajya Sabha. You know, all this kind of mm -hmm. thing. So I am mm -hmm. telling you, BJP is far superior to any other party mm -hmm. today because it's spread mm -hmm. all over the country. It's got cutters all over the country. And it's got an ideology which is uh, uniting people who were antagonistic to each other in the one community, namely the Hindu community. I mean, that's 82%. So mm. they, there's never been so much growing unity amongst the most divided community of India, namely the Hindu community. And that is a great contribution. <coughs> we have on national security shown Pakistan its place. And I'm mm. sure that in, uh, in the future, there'll be many more things we'll do and nobody would dare to do it. Article 3, well, me... you're all one yeah. would create chaos. Nothing has yes, happened. Let me, let me just take it one by one, sir. Point number yeah. one that you make up is about the, the, the consolidation of this community, which has been forever so widely divided, the Hindu community. Yes. Do, do, if I was to argue today, Dr. Swami, that the real problem why there is no focus on economic management or why there is greater economic mismanagement it is because of this spill that you are a Hindu nation. Therefore, <laughs> let us forever keep thinking of Hindu interests. Is, is no, that not happening no, in no, economic no, management? No. Nobody in the government of um, Narendra Modi is thinking about Hindus. It's only people who are outside the government who are thinking about Hindus. And it's for the, it's benefiting the party, party workers are enthused and so on. Uh, Ram Mandir, do you think the government did anything at all? I don't want to, uh, uh, to catalog all the things that tried to block me on. Even today, mm -hmm. Ram Setu has not been declared as a, as a national heritage monument. Why? Uh, why? And why? so many other things. The mm -hmm. only thing is that there were some things that, uh, you know, uh, when people started putting their foot down, we did, the government did, the art removal mm -hmm. of Article 370 and uh, triple mm -hmm. talaq abolition. But uh, mm -hmm. the, the government is not uh, uh, promoting Hinduism at all or uh, Hindutva mm -hmm. or anything of that kind. No, the, 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 point I was, the point I was doing it. The point, the point, the point, Dr. Swami, I was making was this. Yes. And you know, one of our viewers is also asking us this question that the, on one hand, there was Pulwama attack. You know, you yes. yourself pointed out that you've shown Pakistan their place all very well. Absolutely fine with that. Yes. yes. But I get this sense that this is a government which is spending way too much time only yes. and only hyperventilating about what you describe as an ideological case or what could qualify to be a national security case. Is there enough scrutiny happening of this government or is enough focus being given on what will happen to India even after we were to come out of this COVID scenario? No, because I don't think that anybody in the government has either got the voice or if he's got the voice and knows anything about economics. Take this uh, hmm. Prime Minister's uh, uh, announcement upon getting re-elected that he will have the uh, or a five trillion uh, 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 the five trillion dollar economy by uh, 2024. That means hmm. it, it had at that time two and a half trillion. That means doubling uh, hmm. in five years. Doubling in five years means 14.8, 14.4 uh, percent per year. Hmm. Even, even we have not crossed 10 percent. Where is the question of 14.4 percent per year for five years every year? Hmm. So they're simple arithmetic. I hmm. wrote a prime minister letter that please don't go on saying this. But uh, hmm. I don't know who people told him. No, no, this Swami is always coming up with all this. Uh, hmm. But uh, he kept on saying it. And it hmm. became, uh, you know, 
in people who knew the economics and you knew how to do make calculations they were all sneaking away but uh, nobody pointed this out to the prime minister so let me let me give you a straight I, maths I, I let me give you a straight maths no prime minister yeah. is expected to know economics but he must delegate authority to people who can who know economics and can stand up to him and tell him this has to be done and mm. this is the reason why it no. has to be done a lot of questions ishan is asking this question will about uh, decentralization leading to corruption numberish varej is saying in our view in your view how the indian economy shape up post lockdown everyone is worried about the economy dr swami yes. therefore i you know let me let me give you a simple max yes. 2 lakh crore is a special package sir which has been announced by the government uh, and the, the 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 deficit in terms of gst collection over these last two months itself is 8 lakh crore right. you are looking sir at a straight forward scenario where indian government is down by 10 lakh crores so is there any view is there any view where maybe more maybe more is there any view where this money is going to come from sir listen this is the exact approach where to economics which i think is the most uh, retrograde and reactionary approach uh, mm. this is not economics this is uh, accountants mm. uh, mentality where is you the money are, going to come you from? no no you just i am explain to you who you just see what's your problem today mm. all right it is now universal and i'm sure all the industrial is sitting there in 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 the in, in listening to this alpha club know that we have a major demand problem mm. all right so i say how do you uh, generate demand put money money cash into the people's hands so that they mm. can go and buy uh, mm. and how do you do that well mm. you if you are in this kind of crisis situation you uh, start hmm. building roads you hmm. uh, and, and print notes and give it uh, hmm. don't go over. in fact you see uh, many of the facts are not known to the public what did the banks hmm. do they found that all these npas they were all getting prosecuted so they have put hmm. the money in what is called a retro um, uh, retro repo uh, hmm. or reverse repo reverse rate. repo rate. Uh, reports about mm. rate of three and a half percent interest, and they have put the mm. money. When uh, mm. uh, at the beginning of January we had forty thousand crores of bank money in the Reserve Bank, by mm. by fifteenth April it became seven trillion rupees, and mm. now it's eight trillion rupees. Take mm. that out and spend it. Mm. Give it to projects, build projects. You know, you got 300 uh, districts where there is not a single case of uh, of uh, COVID-19. Go and build uh, things. Put people money or money into people's hands. Abolish income tax. Therefore, all these industrialists, I'm telling you, will be extremely happy, and hmm. uh, they will start investing. Lower the interest rates. Hmm. Uh, raise the uh, um, the interest rates on um, uh, fixed deposits. These, are, these okay. are the ways to do it. Not where uh -huh. is this money going to come from? Where is the, this has made us into babus? It has made us into accountants. This is so not there are economics. Two questions. There are two questions. There are two questions following up with what you're saying, sir. And one is coming from Naman, uh, yes. who's uh, who wants to know a question which I have often asked you that since you know everything about economics and most certainly you're not an accountant, why does the prime minister shy away from making you the finance minister? You appear to have all the answers. Why are you not the finance minister of this country? I am not the finance minister uh, because of two reasons. One reason, mm -hmm. Chandrasekhar told me uh, he will give me two portfolios, but he will not give me the finance ministry. And he mm -hmm. gave me the reason. And I liked his frankness, so I accepted. Mm -hmm. And the other reason is I am not just an economist. I am also a politician who is known the length and breadth of this country, uh, mm -hmm. generally considered as a I, icon of Hindutva, uh, of course, yes. vast support in the party. Uh, I demonstrated once when I brought in a bill, private members bill on on uh, ban on cow slaughter, and the mm. party issued a whip against me, saying mm -hmm. that every every MP should vote against Swami's uh, uh, you know bill, and mm. the, there was a revolt. They all mm. decided to vote for me, and mm. finally they came to me. The uh, uh, the parliamentary affairs minister and uh, begged me to withdraw the bill. I said, I'll withdraw it under the condition that you give an assurance that you yourself will bring the bill, which they gave, and we drew. So when a person is not only conscious, but he has roots in the party, and the party ideologue is uh, de facto recognized, 
it is a bit unnerving for a prime minister to have him by his side, especially mm -hmm. if he has a reputation not to listen to anybody. So basically, basically, Dr. Swami is saying that Dr. Swami's reputation, his ability to deal with, let's say, larger country-centric or, or world-centric economic issues, as far as economic issues is concerned, is far better than Narendra Modi's? Of course, he doesn't know any economics at all. That I can say, I've been openly saying it also. Now, otherwise, he wouldn't have said $5 trillion uh, in 2024. But uh, there's a Chandrasekhar reason also. Hmm. He told me, once you become, you start probing people's bank accounts abroad and things like that. Hmm. So I said, Usme kya harja hai? He said, Baud log hai, amare ird gird, or sab, yani, upadrav ho jayega. So, abhi mat lo, thodi din ke baad, mein kar dum la, abhi nahi karna hai. So, that, that I appreciated. Yes, I mean, once I come, uh, you know, I will do those things. You, you, know, you won't, you won't, you won't. people will be hurt. Nobody, nobody will be your friend. But look at the, look at the counter side. Look at the counter view to this, uh, Dr. Swami. And uh, yes. again, this is the question coming from one of our viewers who, yes. who wants to know that on one hand, Subramanian Swami believes Narendra Modi knows no economics. And on the other person who Subramanian Swami often refers to as Buddhu is, is going on and on, you know, doing all these conversations about, well, about, you know, with people who I may believe are, are top economists, but again, your view about Abhijit Majumdar may be different, sir. I, I prefer a person who doesn't know economics and, uh, you know, and do, do the work on his behalf rather than have a parrot who just recites what failed uh, uh, persons uh, give him. Raghuram Rajan is his now tutor, and that man doesn't know any, any economics. He's got a degree from IIT Delhi, and, and, and then he's got a management degree, that doesn't entitle to economics. Economics is macroeconomics, where you mm. move one, one direction, it affects the whole economy. It's a, a multi-sectoral uh, perception you have to have. You can't mm. be an accountant, therefore. Mm. And uh, Raghuram Rajan was an accountant. He said he'll raise uh, interest rates so that inflation be controlled. But then what mm. did he Cost of capital went up and all small, uh, uh, medium and small industries all started closing down. So that means that you're not an economist. An economist do you looks think, at the whole picture. Do you think, Dr. Swami, do you think Rahul Gandhi, who yes. clearly his party is making yet another attempt to somehow rebrand him and rebrand him? <laughs> do you think he can ever be rebranded, sir? The country as a whole, down to the ordinary worker in the landless worker in the village, today thinks that this party is a foreign party. It's not a Bharatiya party. Hmm. They, have, they are responsible for this. They are themselves responsible for it. And uh, today, the foreignness of Congress will never bring it back. It has to be a coalition of other parties, you see. That can be a challenge, if at all. If at all. But, but in my opinion, the, because of the cadres of the RSS, the ideology of the BJP, I don't think it's, uh, we will lose 2024 or 2029. But then, Dr. Swami, you know, uh, that, uh, I know you, you, you never forget anything. You have an elephantine memory. But perhaps you're forgetting about the fact, sir, that uh, just in 2018 end, we remember what had happened, where the BJP ended up losing three states. Three so states, yes. So do I then yes. understand that the Congress oh, is good enough oh, oh, to win oh, oh, states, but oh, not the center? Of uh, three states, of which one has come back. Another one is due to come back after the uh, knockdown, uh, you know, shutdown or uh, uh, knockdown, <laughs> whatever it's called. Uh, mm. Close down uh, is mm. over. Uh, mm. I don't think that uh, the, any of these Congress states is going to survive mm. um, because of the fact that there's so much internal Nassine war going on. But I don't mm. think that the assembly is a problem. Uh, mm. The real question is when the nation is to select a person, the uh, a person as well as a party to rule, mm. there I think there's just no challenge to the BJP because of its ideology. So let, let me let me let me break it down. Do you do you anticipate there is is there anybody on the Indian political horizon right now? Much like you know we say in 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 economic terms, crisis produces an opportunity as well, and adversity produces an opportunity. So let's look at it in a political prism, sir. Is there anyone in the political matrix, according to you, who could be a counter to Prime Minister Modi today? You see, this India is a very strange place. Uh, people used to say after Nehru who. If somebody at that time said Lal Bahadur Shastri, everybody would have laughed. Hmm. 
<laughs> in fact, when he took oath of office as a prime minister, they all started laughing. It chidiya ko kahan jaakar bata diya, you know all that. So, hmm. but he turned out to be super. He brought in a, a green revolution. He hmm. taught Pakistan a lesson. So, hmm. you know, therefore, I don't think we should speculate on that. If hmm. there is a need, hmm. the country will uh, automatically throw up somebody whom hmm. you today don't think of as, a, as an alternative. But he hmm. may, at that time, in that situation, become an alternative. Okay, another, let me take another viewer question, sir. This is again Naman who is asking you, and this is a rather interesting question in the context of us trying to figure out whether there is a political alternative. Yes. You, Dr. Swami, have often taken very strong positions against minorities. Yeah. Uh, and he's quoting one of your statements where you said that if Muslims are more than 30% population in any country, it poses a threat to that country. Yes. Therefore, that. You, yeah. so therefore, therefore, do you believe do you believe the equation or the lack of it today, which exists between the Hindu community and the, and the Muslim community today, how does it augur for India's future? 20% of India's population, do we make them feel marginalized? Do we tell them that, listen, you all are second grade citizens? First of all, I never said they are second grade citizens. No, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. I'm asking no, you. listen, I, one of my daughters is married to a Muslim and they are, we are live in harmony. My wife is a Parsi. She has never had any problem. <laughs> They're the smallest minority. Uh, I have a, a sister-in-law who's Christian. So I, I, what is my ideology, which the Muslims understand, they come around. For instance, on the Ram Mandir issue, I played a major role in telling the Muslims that this is a court judgment. You have to accept it. This is the Ram, uh, Ima, even uh, the great poet of, uh, of the Muslims that called him Imam Hind. And hmm. if you lose in the court, you should accept it. Otherwise, hmm. it will be a problem. The, hmm. the ideology of Islam that is given, given in Hadith and Sirah by Muhammad himself says, if you, are, if you are in control of a country that is Darul Islam, there is no room for any minority. Hmm. And I can quote you from the Quran itself, we'll leave alone here, Hadith and Sirah. Hmm. Then he says there is a Darum, Darul Harab, which is hmm. India where mm. Muslims are not in power, they are not in majority. Mm. And there he prescribes the, how to struggle, struggle, you, you know, ca carry out any, anything you have to, any number of lies you have to, any, uh, anything that you need to do to go, become bigger and bigger. Mm. And, uh, and the third is Darul Ahad, which is where the Muslims are in such minority and the majority is so united mm. that it, they can be beaten up. It's like Australia. Australia, they accept uniform civil court uh, and uh, they, they don't insist on wearing burqas. They don't insist on putting a, a scarf over their head. They don't uh, be, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, allow anyone to marry there the more than uh, one uh, uh, other person, I mean, from the other sex. So all these uh, issues, issues tell me this, that as a community, they are railroaded by some of these fanatics. Hmm. So. I would tell the, it's in the Muslim community, you're one of us because the DNA studies say that your DNA and the, my DNA is the same, which means your ancestors are also from this country. So mm. we are part of one family, except that don't try to make distinctions which will make you closer to, uh, to the Arabs by putting, uh, having their beards and their dresses. Uh, you know, you culturally, you are Hindus, but religiously, you are Muslims. And this country has respected religions of other, other religions. The Jews came here, we protected them. The Parsis came here, we looked after them. And there is, a, even amongst the Christians, when the Syrian Christians came, they, we looked after them. It's only because Islam was an uh, was aggressive uh, entrant into our country. So many people got butchered, killed, raped, all that. So those memories have to be forgotten. The only way that can be forgotten is Muslims say, we, are, we may have become Muslims for whatever reason, but we are part of this country. We belong to this country's soil. Bharat Mata is as much our Mata as your Mata. Then hmm. we will live together and that's the way I have found many, many Muslim friends who have no difficulty with being me. I promote them. The president, I have a president of North Kashmir is a hardline Muslim originally. And I, uh, I brought him around and today the BJP has appointed him as a president. So hmm. the, uh, the appeasement is not going to get you any unity in this country. 
It okay. has to be clear that this country's culture is this. This is the direction we are moving. And hmm. as far as praying to God is concerned, nobody will inter uh, interfere with you. All right. You often, you often argue that your right to pray is, of course, uh, you know, above any, any religion's right. But, but that's a fundamental a, right in the Constitution. And the Constitution, right. right. But uh, the, on, on, I'm, I'm just restricting myself right now to the kind of, you know, I'm suddenly bombarded by so many viewer questions and everybody <laughs> wants to know, since a lot of our viewers today, uh, Dr. Swami, are, uh, are in West Bengal, they want to know about the BJP strategy in, in, in Bengal. Does Didi have any cause to worry or do you think that this, in an assembly level, there is no contest between Mamta Banerjee and the BJP? First of all, uh, the BJP in Bengal is, is uh, it only deals with uh, people, office bearers. <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't interact with me at all. But okay. I have long connections with Bengal. I was got my master's degree from Bengal. And I think very well of the Bengalis. Uh, they are one of the most cultured people in the, in the, in the whole of India. Hmm. The way they treat their women on buses and trains, uh, you know, is exemplary and should hmm. be learned from other states. Uh, hmm. I have admiration for their heroes uh, who showed us the way, Subhash Bose or uh, so many others, who hmm. Arvindo and so on, and Vivekananda. And so there's no question of my having uh, any other view except that Bengal is a pride of India. But I believe that Mamta Banerjee earned my respect when she fought single-handedly the communists and finished them and came mm. to power. Now, today, BJP is only gaining the ground which belongs to uh, CPM. Mm. And they have uh, replaced the CPM as the number two party. Hmm. But uh, Mamta Banerjee, in my opinion, should be with us. We should try hmm. to woo her and uh, you know, try to get rid of some of the... Uh, Any that's, a, that's, a big uh, huh? that's a big headline, Dr. Swami. You yes, 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 you, uh, I have made it public. I, uh, I dealt with her, by the way, on one issue hmm. where she showed so much straightforward courage, courage that I told everybody of the example. There was a case in Hooghly. Uh, a place called Tarkeshwar Temple, mm. and that entire Hooghly was handed over uh, to to the de for development purposes to uh, the urban development minister, who happened mm. to be a minister, uh, a Muslim. Mm. So all the BJP workers uh, so said to me, "Please go to court and get this stopped and so on." A Muslim is now in charge of this ancient temple called Tarkeshwar. I mm. said, "I will, but I will first talk to her." Hmm. I went across uh, to meet her, explained to her. She immediately on the spot said, you are right. But only thing I don't like your saying is that I, I have handed it over to a Muslim minister. Uh, any minister is wrong. So please hmm. correct that. So I corrected it and I said, you have no right to hand it to your minister. And okay. then she gave an order in my presence. And today, Tarkeshwar is independent of the state control. Now, hmm. that she is a Paka Hindu. A house has got the Durga uh, temple. She prays every day to uh, Durga, and her favorite god is the Kali, by the way. And of oh. course, it uh, rubs off on her a bit also. And hmm. so, I think that Mamta and, uh, and uh, BJP should collaborate at the national level, at, at the state level. Let us keep, uh, let us keep the fight going on. Uh, okay, final question then to you, Dr. Swami. I know you have other engagements as well this evening. Yeah. In 2024, if there is no alternative to Narendra Modi politically, as you seem to be suggesting, yes. is there yes. any alternative within the BJP itself to the Prime Minister in 2024? So, uh, um, I think you see, <laughs> that's a naughty question on your part. <laughs> oh, uh, viewers' question. Viewers' question, sir. Viewers' question. <laughs> I tell you one thing about the BJP culture, which I learned the hard way. The, the base is RSS. If you anger them, you may be very popular with uh, Bupendra Chabe, like Bajpai was, mm. but you have no chance. India might be shining, mm. but we ended up from a 182 to 118 mm. because the RSS provides the worker, he's gem of a person, he doesn't want any money, he mm. just wants the pleasure of knowing that I gave up my entire uh, career and joined the RSS so this country is the party moving in that direction. Hmm. So um, if at that uh, 2020, uh, 20, 2024 
if there's a, that feeling comes, then RSS themselves will find an alternative. And they will build him up in such a way that you will say, why, why didn't I think of this name before? But mm -hmm. as of now, I don't think there is any uh, thought, uh, consideration, or even speculation that in 2024, we'll look for an alternative to Manarendra Modi within the party.